In this video, we are going to take a look at the Peterson's solution. This is a two process solution to tackle the problem of critical section. So let's say there are two processes PI and PJ and they have a critical section. So at any given point in time, only one process should be allowed to manipulate data in the critical section. So there will be some code in the entry section which will ensure this so that only one process enters the critical section while the other keeps waiting in the entry section. Only when one process who had entered the critical section is out of the critical section and is in the remainder section, then only the other process will be allowed to enter the critical section. So Peterson's solution, it proposes two variables which are shared between the two processes. One variable is an integer variable turn and another is a boolean array of size 2. We know that in a boolean array, the possible values can be true or false only. This variable turn indicates whose turn it is to enter the critical section. That means which process is now supposed to enter the critical section. If turn is equal to i, that means process pi will enter. If turn is equal to j, that means process pj will enter the critical section. Flag array which is of type boolean, it is used to indicate by the process if it is ready to enter the critical section. So if suppose pi wishes to enter the critical section, it will assign a value of true to its uh, its value at index i. So if flag i is equal to true, that means process pi is ready and wishes to enter the critical section. If flag j at index j is true, that means process pj is ready to enter the critical section. If the values are false, that means the process does not want to enter the critical section. Now let's take a look at the code in detail. So this is the algorithm over here. This is the code for process pi and this is the code for process pj. They are sharing two variables, the integer variable turn and the boolean flag array. So process pi will assign a value of true to at its index in the array. So flag i will be equal to true. This shows that process pi wishes to enter the critical section. Now let's say process pj also wants to enter. So it will assign a value of true at index j. So pj if it wishes to enter the critical section, the index value at j will be true. If pi wants to enter, then the index value at index, the, the value at index i will be equal to true. So now process pi assigns a value of j to turn. That means it is allowing the other process to enter the critical section. So though it wants to enter the critical section by assigning a value of true to its flag index, but it, is assign, it has assigned j to turn because it is giving a chance to process pj to enter the critical section. Similarly, pj assigns a value of i to turn. That means it is allowing process pi to enter the critical section. So both the processes are allowing the other process to enter the critical section. Now since the, this turn variable is shared and let's say the processes are running concurrently. So pi is also trying to change the value of turn and pj is also trying to change the value of turn. Let's say the final value of turn is i. So first this ran, this statement was executed and then after that this, uh, this instruction was executed. So the final value of turn is i. Now let's see what happens in process pi. The next statement is while flag of j and turn is equal to j do nothing. So this semicolon over here says that do nothing. Flag of j is true 
So we know that over here flag of J was true and flag of I is also true. So both the, fla the uh, flag values are true. So while flag of J is true and turn is equal to J, but turn is actually equal to I. So this, this part of the condition becomes false. So this is an AND operator over here. So true and false results in a false. So PI will come out of this while loop and enter the critical section. Let's see what happens in process PJ. While flag I, so flag I is true, so this becomes true over here. And turn is equal to I, so this is also true because the final value of turn over here was I. So this condition becomes true, true and true gives true. So now since this condition is true, process PJ will be stuck in this while loop and it will keep on checking these conditions again and again. So the, you can see that now process P high has already entered the critical section, but process P j is stuck in the while loop and is not able to enter the critical section. Once P i has finished executing the critical section and manipulating the data in the critical section, once it comes out, it will change the value of flag i to false. So now this value of index i becomes false because pi has already used the critical section and this becomes false. Now when pj checks the condition in the next run, flag of i is false. So this whole condition will become false and now process pj will be out of this while loop and now it can enter the critical section. And after that when it has enter the critical section, it will change the value of flag J also to be false. So here, as soon as the flag of I becomes false, turn was I, turn was still I, so this is true, but false and true will result in a false. So the process PJ will be out into the critical section. After it has done the critical section, now it will change the value of its flag also to false and then finally proceed with the remainder sections. Now let us see whether this solution fulfills the requirement of the critical section problem or not. As we can see the first requirement is of mutual exclusion that no more than one process can be in the critical section. So is this condition being followed? Yes. When PI was in the critical section PJ was stuck in the while loop and it could not enter the critical section. If let's say the final value of turn was J, then in that case PJ would have entered the critical section first followed by PI. So at any given point in time only one process is in the critical section. Progress. If no process is in critical section, and some processes request entry in the critical section, then only those processes that are not executing in the remainder sections can participate in deciding which will enter its critical section next and the selection of next process cannot be postponed indefinitely. When both the processes were at this stage, they were not in their remainder section. That means they were both wanted, both wished to enter the critical section and both collectively decided which process will enter the critical section. So both, both processes participated in that decision and this decision was not prolonged indefinitely. Third condition, the third requirement is of bounded weight that a bound must exist on the number of times other processes are allowed to enter their critical section after a process has made a request to enter its critical section and before that request is granted. We see over here that once process PI is out of the critical section, it turns its flag to false. That means it will not enter the critical section again and it allows the other process PJ to enter the critical section. So there is a bound on the number of times this process, a process is entering the critical section. 
So what are the limitations of this Peterson solution? Number one, it is not guaranteed to work on modern architectures. Why is that? Because in modern architectures, the processors and compilers may reorder the instructions which have no dependency. And if these instructions are reordered, then this solution might not work. So this solution is studied only as a good algorithmic description of solving critical section problem. And it illustrates the complexity involved in designing software that require the implementation of critical section problem and it shows how these requirements of mutual exclusion, progress and bounded weight can be implemented. So this is the importance of Peterson's solution.